Welcome to the Loaded Goat. I'm Aaron. I'm Chris. How you doing? Oh boy. Oh boy. You know what? It's sunny out. We have blue sky. Do you know this term bluebird day? No, I never have heard that term. This blows my mind. Yeah, one of my friends, I said bluebird day and he didn't know it either. It's like when you just have all blue sky, nothing, not a cloud in the sky. That must it's be something more... I hear. We say it all the time. I, I, it must be a, a cultural difference. It's a cultural difference. And I mean, I don't mean to be cliched, but Montana has a bigger sky than most people see. And I'm not blown, I'm not being ridiculous. It does. Uh, Do you agree? That. I've never understood that. If you know, I'm just driving out through Montana, looking up at the sky. It's so much bigger. Then uh, like Texas, Texas sky has to have a bigger sky than we do. I don't know about that. All right. Yeah. Well, we can leave that one there. I align more with the treasure state, you know? That's why do you? Too. Wh- why is it called the treasure state? Because we got all those treasures in the ground. You do. You know. You. You. Okay. There's you. But what about there's the you. treasures in the ground? Well, we mostly got them out of the ground a hundred years ago. Oh, so it's no longer the treasure state. <laughs> all, all the copper is in your in your house eating ah, you right now. Eating me right now. Okay. Eating okay. You, yeah. Good. Oh, heating me. Heating me. Okay. All right. Well. Good to know. I mean, I based on a lot of just movies and television shows, copper piping, regardless of whatever state it's in, it's always it's always in high demand. It is. It is. Yeah. All right. So today we're doing Andy's vacation. I um I like this episode. I also the the person who is at the most fault in this episode, though, is Andy. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And you want to know it's why? Because you just got off from vacation and you had to do all the work on this podcast probably while you were on vacation. I did have to do some work on the podcast while I was on vacation. Thanks for that. And see, in the end, though, I did have to. Um, I just noted that Andy can't take a vacation because Andy's basically made a bunch of bad hires. Oh, that's true. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's not Andy's fault. It's not Barney's. Barney's been Barney and Comer's been Comer. If these are your backups when you're going to go on vacation, you can't it's really take a out. vacation. That's true. Yeah. Pretty, what do you think? Good. I love this. Oh, well, I don't know. I thought this episode was really fun to watch, but it also just stressed me. It, I just like it's one of those where it's just kind of like, oh, God, why did we do that? You know, Um. so. Even reading Everett Frizzell, um, Jim Frizzell and Everett Greenbaum's kind of notes on this and talking about this, they also tried to make this less of a retread. It did feel in many ways like this was a a retread with Andy taking a vacation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You want to dive in? Let's dive in head first. All right. This episode first aired on March 9th, 1964, and we open with Andy telling Harley that he can't dam up Snakes Creek, and he's had it with him, and he's angry. And then Barney brings in a couple who is fighting, and Andy is annoyed with all three of them. Apparently, Maudie, the wife, threw a chicken at her husband, Naylor. Naylor's played by Dabs Greer, who, have you ever seen The Green Mile, Christopher? No. Well, he plays the older older version of Tom Hanks in The Green Mile, so... Folks, I'm sure folks will know who that is. And Maudie is played by Molly Dodd, which is a great name. Um, And it's the second of three appearances for her on the show. Oh, okay. Wait, what was the first one? I don't remember. Oh, Aaron. You want me to look it up? Aaron. No, I don't. I don't. Let's, Let's just guess. I bet that she was in the, she was a bank teller in Gomer's first episode. She was not a bank teller in Gomer's first episode, unless I'm wrong. No, you're wrong. She's Miss Bracey in the the class reunion episode. Oh, okay. But nice guess. Thank you. So Andy chews them out and finds each of them $10. And he is mad and he seems really burnt out. And this may be the first and only glimpse we really have of the actual Andy Griffith's real temper. Yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, he seems really hot blooded at this point. I think so too. Do you think this is one of those where they're like, "I right, just spitball for two minutes," and Andy Griffith showed up upset, and then just he's just not playing with Barney. 
No, I think they were, I think it was just kind of like, okay, just be mad. And he's like, oh, I can do that. And, uh, and he dove and he, and he handled it very well. And then Barney finally asks what's wrong with Andy. And Andy's been up again, up at four, since four o'clock dealing with an issue. He says he's sick of sheriffing. And of course, Barney, who can't help but make it about himself, asks if he's sick of him too. And Andy says he kind of is. And Barney, it's over it, but he tells Andy to take a vacation all the way to Miami Beach as like some sort of swinging bachelor. I, lo- Andy, I loved, I loved this as a recommendation. Yeah, because you, I mean, Barney couldn't pull it off, and Andy doesn't even want to pull it off. No, no, no. And Andy says he's going to stay at home and take it easy and read some National Geographics because some gardening and do some gardening. And later, Barney is giving Omer, Gomer an inspection as a deputy, and Andy shows up because Barney wanted to show him the great job he was doing. And of course, Gomer's Barney's worried about the back of Gomer's shoes being shined, but he doesn't even bother to worry about the uh, badge that um, to make sure that Gomer is wearing a badge. Yeah, which is that's an important part, as Andy will soon, as Gomer will soon learn. Yeah, Andy explains that it's his most important piece of equipment. And this is kind of odd that apparently Barney's been getting his advice on attention to detail and to being dressed to the nine nines from an old German World War I soldier. Which did I miss this part? His name's Hugo. Maybe I did. I watched this like as I was, I watched the the up to this point last night before I went to bed. And I feel like I was like right there. I was like, I'm falling asleep. I should watch the rest of the morning. <laughs> okay. I don't tell me about this part. He just said, he said he was, you know, he fought for the Germans in world war one, but he's been all about America ever since. Okay. That's uh that still seems kind of like, yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I would, I, I would be kind of like, I would bet Hugo might get a little, still have a little bit of hostility. In, if you were in, in Inglorious Bastards, he would have had a, a swastika, you know, cut into his forehead. So he couldn't do that. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, he would have, he would have. And that, you know, and movie yeah. reference for folks that weren't tracking that it wasn't an idea I had. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, you know, he'd have Brad Pitt saying, oh, what are you, you going to take that uniform off? How they's not going to know you're a Nazi. Exactly. But exactly. Uh, who knows? He may have left at the end. I mean, I'm supposed to assume he left at the end of World War One and did not have anything to do with World War Two. Oh, you did say World War One. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Trenches. So Andy gets back home and Aunt B says someone called because they heard yelling at the courthouse. He gets there and Barney and Gomer have locked themselves in a cell. And... Again, I know Andy's frustrated, but this really is just kind of like when you when you basically hire the two biggest nincompoops in town, this is what's going to happen. Yep, completely. And then back at the Taylor household, Andy is dealing with a concerned citizen, and Aunt B tells him he should leave out of he should get out of town. And then Bunny Caldwell calls. It turns out Gomer gave her a parking ticket, and. Is so arguing. much of this was strange. <clears throat> they're like that was a law that was passed on the ballot that you couldn't park on like Tuesdays from nine to eleven, so that he can sweep out his grocery. That's the kind of ballot initiative that Mayberry is taking. That's I mean, the, rulemaking authority. I mean, passing on the ballot—that is, um, that's. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, we're not, not going to let this, the town council do this. We're going to make this a referendum for the yeah, um, for the whole for the whole community. It's a lot of local control. Yeah, yeah. So, Aunt B is, is irate, and Barney and Aunt, but then Andy reminds her that he's on vacation. <clears throat> And Andy sits down at the window to read his National Geographic. And then Barney sh- and Gomer show up at the window asking for handcuffs. And they you know, one ask- of the things, when this started, I was like, what, what's the comment I could make? First of all, it looks like a beautiful day. Second, mm-hmm. really good looking apples. And I didn't think that the apples would be a part of the, the conversation. But it, here we but go. They were because Gomer reaches for an apple and it turns out they've handcuffed themselves together. And then Andy frees them and shoes them away. And he gets a call and a lady calls him at home asking him to. Well, he gets a call from a lady asking him to help get her cat down from the tree. 
And Andy tells her to call Barney and then goes and asks Aunt B to pack a knapsack for him. He says going to the he says he's going to the mountains and he doesn't want anyone to know. He tells Aunt B not to tell anyone, and she says, tick a lock, and we go to commercial. Tick a lock. Tick a lock. And after the break, Andy is setting up at camp and he looks at, very much at peace. He does. That looks like a really nice time. I wish, you know, it would have been nice if Opie were there, but I'm glad he just did it all on his own. Yeah. Yeah, me too. He needed it. I mean, this is the, really, at the end of the day, if he's the sheriff and people just feel, you know, obliged to call him at home. You got to leave home. You got you to gotta get out of town. Yep. Um, Back at the jail, the state police show up and they have an escaped convict. The prisoner is played by Alan Melvin. And they put the prisoner up. Gomer says they need to call Andy and Barney's offended and he protests. And the two of you argue as the prisoner grabs the keys and sneaks away. Barry, I would have waited like a little bit longer. Like, I bet the guy that brought him in is still sitting outside idling in his car. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's and and it's really works out because. The convict escapes and immediately just makes his way right over to Andy's camp and tells him he was out hunting quail. And at the jail, Barney and Gomer are scrambling to find camp. But also, like Andy. this guy, this guy is a convict. He's apparently made it 400 miles. And then he approaches the first person he sees out in the woods because he smells bacon. I mean, who can resist bacon? I don't know. I was in Egypt and Jordan for 18 days. You know what they don't have over there? Bacon. bacon. And I was really <laughs> excited to get some bacon when I got home. It's hard <laughs> to resist bacon. All right. All right. So. Sorry you had to go through that. No, I mean, you should write a letter to the Smithsonian about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, you know, it's uh, not, you know, pork. Not really big in those two countries. <laughs> I, you just kind of have to grin and bear it. <sighs> yeah. So. They're, they're trying to find Andy, and Andy's already figured out he he's a convict. The guy's a convict because hunting quail is out of season, and he's also wearing prison shoes. And Andy ties the guy to a tree and leaves him his coat while he goes to call a ranger station. And Barney and Gomer arrive in the woods looking for Andy, and they see a man tied to a tree and run to him. And the escape. Oh, there's so much good humor though, right? When Gomer's like, "You never let me look," and then he looks through it and pulls Barney. Oh, over it's good. It's good. Good out. physical comedy. Yeah, that's that's great. And um, yeah, just great stuff. And then the escaped convict uses a very bad voice. I mean, it's like, did you ever see the Saturday Night Live skit where Alec Baldwin is plays the mimic? Well, the mimic is. Um, he's like, I'm the mimic. I can mimic anyone's voice. And every time he's like, you, you're so supposed to be mimicking somebody. And he talks like this. It's every, every voice he does is just a terrible, terrible mimic. And this is kind of what Alan Melvin seems to be doing. Yeah, right. So they let him go and he runs off. Later, Barney and Gomer come upon Andy and think he's a convict. And Barney hands Gomer his gun and goes to take him alive. And Barney sneaks up on him and screams. He sneaks up on him like a snake. I yeah. could watch that should be a meme the way that yeah. he just slithers on the ground. You know, there's not enough Andy Griffith memes. That's true. There needs to be more. Maybe we maybe can, that's actually what we can add to the culture with the, with this process we're going through. Well, if we could, but I feel like when you say we, you think you're like I could add more more to it. You're kind of looking at me to do this. What? I'm implying that you are, you're saying we could add this, but at the end of the day, you're not going to do anything. I have the idea. I'm the idea, man. Yeah, that's you, Mr. My job's not to work. My job is just to give this podcast a certain panache. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, that's, that's you. All right. So, so Barney screams as he pounces on Andy, who kind of just overpowers Barney and pins him down. And he learns that they let the convict go. And Andy tells them they need to split up. Before they do, Andy says, you didn't give them a gun, did you? And Barney says, what do you take us for? A couple of idiots? <laughs> Which is, yeah. the answer is yes. Yes, yes I do. Yes. Um, and the prisoner is in the area and he is stalking, and Andy is stalking him while Barney and Gomer stalk each other. And Andy grabs the prisoner while Gomer grabs Barney 
and everyone is annoyed as we go to commercial. It's funny though. It is funny. It's funny though. I love them walking around the tree. In the epilogue, Barney is reading the paper account of what happened. It has his name listed as Fike instead of Fife. And Andy he says always Barney, spells his name wrong. Always spells his name wrong. He kind of him getting his name spelled wrong is the is I think he got off easy. Yeah, for sure. This is like just total incompetence, and he's getting to be played up like a hero in the paper. Yep. And Andy says Barney should take a week off and go to Raleigh and stay at the Y. And he sends him on his way, which is sure, what a corner suite at the Y. A corner suite at the Y. And he sends him on his way and then takes his, out his National Geographic to read as we close. And as you will see in next week's episode, this is a rare form of continuity because Barney yeah. is still in Raleigh. That was the one thing I was going to say. All yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. So what'd you think? Great episode. I, I really enjoyed this. I think this might be one where you rate this higher than me. How many whistles would you give this? Nine. Okay. I would give it seven. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Interesting. No, I just didn't expect that out of you. Classically average. Okay. All right. No, it's not classically good. average. It's above average. If I gave it a five, it'd be classically average. It's oh. still above average. I've seen that. It's just a lot of this I've seen before. Yeah, I can't go into this whole scoring thing. I'm on a board and I'm just in fights with people about how to score things and what they value as different things. We can't go down this road. We're talking about an episode of the Andy Griffith Show. Of not, the not prime some, time. Not, not, not whatever stuff you do for your day job. <laughs> Let me explain it to you. No, no, it's great. It was good. I really liked this episode. So I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, I appreciate the show more than you. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I'm, it's my pleasure. Thanks for thank you for all the work you do on this and for just allowing me to to ride your coattails. My pleasure. And thank you for listening. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. And if you think about it, subscribe. Next week we'll do Andy Saves Gomer. And until then, folks, what do you take us for? A couple of idiots? Shazam! <laughs> <laughs>